Hi guys, Chris here with Super Savvy Travelers. Hey, today I wanna to go over the, the different types of properties that you can find in Italy. Now, just to give you a little heads up, I don't have my computer because it's still dead. Uh, so I'm not gonna be cutting and pasting. So if I go, uh, 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 you're gonna understand that that's what's happening. But I did wanna communicate with you on this particular subject. So please forgive the lack of polish on this particular video if that occurs. Now, that said, I'm gonna go over like the three different types of properties that people mostly ask me about when they ask me about properties. And the first one is the villa slash farmhouse. Now, they can be two totally different things. A villa is usually a lot bigger, a lot more, um, you know, more, uh, um, how can I say, beautiful, grand, that kind of thing. Uh, a farmhouse could be anything. It could be a little one room house, you know, with farmland attached. So you have a huge range of possibilities there but a lot of the issues are the same on that particular type of property. So we're gonna talk about that one today, and in a subsequent video, I'm gonna talk about the medieval properties in the historic centers, which are very, very unique, and they have unique uh, issues that you have to really be aware of. And then finally, I'm gonna go over the modern apartments slash condos. They're, they're called apartments, but they're you know condos, townhouses, whatever you wanna call them, the more modern builds um, that you can find. So we're gonna go over that in another video. So today, we're talking about the villa slash farmhouse uh, situation. Now, first of all, I want to caution you because it depends on what you're planning to use this house for. Now, if you want a vacation home, be aware that all over Europe and probably all over the world, uh, these types of homes, if you're not in them all year round, are targeted for thievery. And sometimes the thieves will have all winter to just back up their truck and just offload everything. And I have heard of that. So, not only in Italy, but also in France, uh, Spain, that kind of thing. It's just, it's a thing for whatever reason. Uh, you can get around that by having a caretaker or having um, somebody look after your property. But again, they're not there all the time. So you do have to be aware of that and just make sure that you have that sort of in mind and you have a way to counteract that if that's what you want to do. Now, those particular properties also have a lot of land, usually, and uh, there is a maintenance issue. So, and I'm not sure what the local communes uh, require as far as maintenance of land and that sort of thing. It's something that you want to think about. Are you going to have a caretaker? Are you going to have a gardener or a, or a, you know, a farmer to handle the, the fields and things like that? So that's another thing that you want to think about. It's another level of complexity, and if that's what you want, then great, go for it. So that's wonderful. Okay, now another thing you wanna look at is there are many different levels of property um, in construction or deconstruction, as I like to say, because some of these are quite old. Now, you can get a total ruin and fix it up. And that's great and fun and a wonderful project, but there's a few things that you really have to keep in mind if you're gonna do that. Number one, depending on the age of this particular ruin, you have to make sure that electricity actually goes out to that particular structure. Now, many of these places have been abandoned in the 1800s and 1900s. A lot of them didn't have electricity. A lot of them didn't even have running water. So you have to make sure that the water comes to you, the electricity comes to you, the sewer comes to you, and all of that kind of stuff because that's an added expense if you're gonna put it in yourself. So that's something you need to look at. Now, another thing is you need to look at the integrity of the structure. If the roof is gone or failing in certain parts, the water gets into the walls, it drifts down and it pulls the walls apart. So you can have not only a problem with the roof, but then the walls can be uh, compromised and you have to take that into account too. I know a person who purchased a complete ruin. She didn't know about the water thing. She didn't know about the electricity thing. And the ruin had to be taken all the way down and then just rebuilt. It really is a brand new house, which is available by the way, if you want to ask me about it, it's a beautiful house. I mean, she did a fabulous job on it, but these were things that she didn't take into consideration when she bought the ruin. So that's another thing you want to look at. Um, there's also habitable uh, ruins, not ruins, but habitable properties. Now habitable is different. Um, it's sort of a different definition than what you might be used to. Just be aware of that, okay? It means that there's a room that you can live in. It doesn't mean there's a kitchen. Um, usually there's a bathroom. Uh, usually there's a lot of repairs needed, but it is quote unquote habitable for whatever purpose. When you look at one of those, it might be a really good deal, but check out the structural issues. Is the roof good? 
Does it need to be replaced? If it's bad, how long has it been bad? Has it affected the integrity of the walls? Again, that kind of thing. Uh, look at all of those things. The, the best, best thing you could possibly get, I think, if you want to do some work and, and have some work done, is to get something that the roof is good, hasn't failed yet. If you have to replace it, great. Just make sure you factor that into the price that you're willing to pay. Um, the walls are still good. Everything is still the way you want it. And make sure that the walls are where you want them to be too, because there, there may be, it's difficult to move these giant, thick uh, medieval walls. Um, so bear that in mind too. So that's, those are things to think about on the, the properties like the villas and the farmhouses. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything I have on that. So that's a lot to uh, go over, a lot to think about. Um, make a list of all of these things that I'm telling you. I do have them in my ebook and my video course, which you should get. I'm going to put something in the comments about uh, how to get our, our video course. And it gives you all of what you have to do for, for renovations, for um, you know, looking for a purchase, getting estimates and things like that. So that'll help you a lot. Good. So if you want a villa or a farmhouse, you can start making your list of things to look out for and things to look for. And, and it's all very exciting and fun. These, these projects are the most fun projects I've ever had. So understand there's going to be some, uh, some ups and downs in it, but that's the fun of it. So anyway, I'll see you later. And uh, we're going to talk about the medieval central historical properties next. See you later. Bye.